I want to start off this episode by issuing an, a public apology. And my basically, I owe an apology to all <laughs> white men. And um, in the last two episodes, um, well, a couple episodes ago now, I basically said that I'm not attracted to white men. And <laughs> I feel like I hurt a lot of people's feelings. And I just want to say, like, Why I'm just not... <laughs> I I'm not in that that's not currently like my era mm -hmm. like but I I'm not um I am open to it all. You're not ruling it out for the future. I'm not ruling it out. I certainly haven't ruled it out in the past. Like I've been with white boys. Okay. Just you know for the next, you know, foreseeable couple weeks. It's just not in my rotation as of now. Listen, she changes the races she's attracted to per week. So <laughs> Just thank you. Stay patient. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I would also like to issue an apology to white men. I am sorry. I am jealous of you. I wish I could get a woman pregnant and I'm struggling with that. And sometimes I take it out on you guys. So I would like to formally apologize. Annie, do you own any? I've been very nice to white men. I have nothing else to say. <laughs> <laughs> You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show. Go to Nutrafol.com and enter code TRASH to save $10 off your first month subscription. Get $10 off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code TRASH. Free shipping on every order. Offer only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. This episode is brought to you by Simply Spiked. Go to drinksimplyspike.com slash trash Tuesday to find out how to get your hands on Simply Spike lemonade and new Simply Spike peach. That's drinksimplyspike.com slash trash Tuesday. Flavored beer, naturally flavored with other natural flavors. Simply Spike Co. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Celebrate responsibly. Simply Spiked is a trademark of the Simply Orange Juice Company. Hey, Sluggies, I'm so excited. You can see me in San Antonio, Texas next weekend on the 23rd. It's a couple weekends from now, 23rd to the 24th. Um, I'm also going to be in Philadelphia in August. And I have, um, I will be in Canada. I will be in um, San Francisco, San Jose, and Austin, Texas, October 6th and 7th. So go to AnnieLetterman.com slash shows to get tickets for all of those. And uh, every Thursday, you can see me on my solo podcast, Annie Wood. It's been so fun. Can't wait to see you there. Hi, Slugs. I'm so excited that I am back on the road doing stand-up. It's been so much fun laughing and being weird with all of you guys. And I will be in New York City at Joe's Pub July 19th through 22nd. I will be at the DC Improv September 28th and at the Wilbur in Boston September 30th. Get tickets at estheronice.com. I know I'm adding more shows I'll see you guys there. Welcome to our 80s workout themed episode. I know this looks really festive and happy, but I'm sweating and <laughs> I, I, I'm fully triggered. I don't know if you guys know this, but I spent my entire childhood, part of the physical abuse that I endured was that my mom made me do Jane Fonda and Susan Harris, the firm workouts on VHS for like a decade. So this Every whole day episode of my life. is like an, a, another reminder of your abuse. I'm twitching. I'm honestly, I came in, I was like, like I, I'm going to start rocking pretty soon because this was my entire childhood and everyone remembers it so fondly, but... Jane so Fonda. Fonda Lee. <laughs> Jane Fonda, the challenge is an hour and a half workout. And it was one that on like an hour and a half. An hour and a half. Try Jane Fonda challenge. It's it's great. They have a a, a dance routine, they have an arm routine, they have a floor routine, they have all the Pilates moves. It's it's hard. And there's Susan Harris, the firm. The firm. It's called the firm. I remember great the workout. Firm. With it, she's wearing yellow. I don't know Long these. Lady. I just want to know what state was our country in that this is the way women were dressing. Like this is was Hot and cute. It is. I think people yeah. fashion follows drugs, right? Oh, is this very cocaine? I think so. I see that there you go, Susan Harris. Quaalude. Like this wasn't much of an ass girl, was she? <laughs> <laughs> I find this to be the most repulsive aesthetic currently. Like you know how the trends go in waves? Like, I feel like right now we're doing this at the exact moment where this is just the most unattractive, undesired. This is unattractive to you? <laughs> um, this is so fun of to All me. the things you wear. <laughs> <laughs> this is my least favorite. But I guess 
It's it, just a little vaginal. Like you're like. Wait, so Annie, you are the only one of us that didn't order a costume. You had this lying around. I had a costume ordered. I said sometimes it doesn't work out, <laughs> and um, I looked in my. I have like sorry, I'm eating a Starburst. It's so disrespectful, <laughs> but it was all they were all pink ones. Anyway. I saw them, uh, they just were sitting there. I just had these skims I ordered on a whim, a skims whim, you know how that goes. Haven't worn them yet. And this is a skims too, and I just thought, oh my God. Oh, the pants are skims too? Everything skims. Oh. And then I had these donut, these Danny Donut DeVito socks that a fan got, gave me in Texas. And Those I, are great Reeboks. And then the Reeboks were free, baby, thank you. All the company that bought um, Juicy sent them to me, thank you. Love you. Oh, Send me more nice. things. <laughs> I'm um I'm wearing this shirt and I'm not um showing you my full outfit because Ooh. again, bulk face. Arms are a little bit thick right now. So isn't that a good thing? Yeah, just not on camera. <laughs> 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 I'll go flex in my own private life. I'll I'm flexing my bulk face. How do we feel? You pretty good, Arnold Esther. Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know what it is? It's Esther not even just the triceps, it's a it's the full back of the arm. What do you Very mean? Very strong. Yeah. Very Kalila, strong. Kalila tattoo accentuated beautifully. <laughs> um, which, speaking of, while we're doing formal apologies, I do want to formally apologize to you in public for getting your name tattooed on my body. I do think that there must be times where that makes you uncomfortable. And I just, in case it does, I want to say I'm sorry. Um this is gonna hurt you even more. I forgot I, I think about it. <laughs> basically, <laughs> I, honestly, that's great. I don't think about it. I when I see it, I'm like, oh, that's a tattoo. I I never crosses my mind. People Esther. telling me that they don't think about me is the greatest option. <laughs> always, like that's the isn't that the best version of things? Always, I don't know. Well, if you well, it depends because if you've built up a story where they're like plotting against you and then you're like, oh, you just weren't thinking about me at all. That's definitely the best case scenario. But if it's like a loved one, I'm like, I hope you're thinking about me a little bit. Not for me. You want no one to think of you? Yeah, I'm like weird biz to be in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually wearing a Skims push-up bra today. I finally got to try it out, so this is exciting for me. And uh, my costume is by. The designer Jeff Bezos, heard of him? <laughs> <laughs> Jeffy, thank you. Jeffrey. Do you want people to be thinking about you or not thinking about you? Um, I don't want to have to think if people are thinking about me, yeah, period. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I've done that so much in my life and it's backfired every like you're my entire right, life right you like think you know yeah you're about you and it's never you're always like that's what you think like, it's like oh, a shit. this is a famous phenomenon it's called the spotlight effect it's like that we as humans always overestimate the amount that others are thinking about us it's just like a part of human nature we always will overestimate that but you, but have you ever <laughs> like kind of gotten the vibe from someone like like there's one girl where I'm like, oh, her boyfriend hears my name a lot. Like, you know, the girls that kind of like. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? You know, like in comedy, there'll be like a younger comic who kind of like you can like, oh, did you get like obsessed with me? Like they get like a mesh with your career. Oh, when you said you her boyfriend I mean? says she hears I just name like, a lot. Like, I was just imagining I'm like, God, she, this one girl once like approached me when she was drunk and gave me too much information. Like it was like, oh, we've never been this close. But see, I've done that. Like I recently met someone who I'm a fan of and I think I did take it too far. It's this guy, who, Max Lugavere, whose podcast I listen to religiously. And I was like, you're so great. Like you killed it on Joe Rogan. Like you're really like fighting the good fight. And I and I walked away from that interaction was like, that man should be scared of me. I said way too much to no. him. No. <laughs> you were a nice fan. I think that's good. Okay. And I think people appreciate that. But when a fan knows too much, I'm like... But it's not a fan. This is someone you work with. I don't work with him. No, but I'm saying... <laughs> in my situation, what I was saying is like, this is like someone that you like, that you like see around the club and you go like, oh, I don't think about... This is not a person that's in my orbit. And then they come to you with so much intensity one night where you go, oh my God, I like you're, you talk about me to your boyfriend a lot. You're like, saying like- You're entangled, you're enmeshed. Uh, interesting. Like, you can I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. You know, like sometimes people get like the poison when you're younger in your career, you get like the poison for someone else and their career feels like when they get things, you like notice it more. Interesting. I have a question to um, both of you um, Jewish girls. 
Um, and my question is, can an ex-Catholic whore um, convert or be accepted into Judaism? Yes, we accept everyone at are all Are you time. sure? How sure are we? Because I'm, I've been watching um, Jewish matchmaking on Netflix. <laughs> I know I saw it. I haven't watched it, but I saw it there. And you know, I go through the whole Indian matchmaking. I watch all like the dating shows, basically. And um, there's a part of me that I, I don't know what it is, but I have Jewish envy, like real Jewish envy. I think a lot of people do. It's real. Wait, what is your envy that you want to be with a Jewish man or you want to be Jewish? I like Shabbat. I like a lot of the ideals. I like, um, um, I love hearing or listening to Hebrew. Like I, it's it, a lot about it. Like I'm magnetized to, but I just don't know if I'm going to be accepted. Okay, well, Jewish people don't like listening to Hebrew. So that is <laughs> an issue. Like I feel like every Jewish guy I know like that hated Hebrew school would cringe at you saying that like that's crazy so am i fetishizing no i am but i Annie? also <laughs> yeah you're fetishizing <laughs> <laughs> this is what i've always felt like about the jewish culture it's like we accept open arms like if you we hate ourselves so it's like if you guys if someone else likes anything about us it's like yes you're welcome like could i marry into a jewish family and be fully integrated yes. and accepted you can convert. Leah McSweeney is a Jew now. Oh, okay. She converted. Okay, this you is hopeful. You can just hopeful. convert. You can just convert. See, white boys. Jewish, if you're Jewish, <laughs> you can have me. But a lot of people do. I have been noticing this more. Like, everyone's like, date a Jewish man, which I obviously agree with because that's what I'm doing. But I am surprised that that's, like, catching on and people are more, like, I meet girls and they're like, find me a single Jewish guy. Like that's ha that's more common. I'm realizing. Do you notice that, mm. Annie? You said this is a common like. Jewish I think people have Jew envy a lot, and but I grew up in a very Jewish neighborhood. But I was brought up Quaker, even though I'm obviously a little, a little Jewish. Were you the uh, Were you the only Quakers in your neighborhood? Yeah, we were the only Quakers in the neighborhood, and then. Um, yeah, we like everyone was Jewish, so we had Jew envy. But I don't. I mean, I don't know if there had been other people around us if we would have had but yeah no we were like wanted to be jewish everyone was jewish what else would you like to do as a, a, like if you're a jewish person i want to go on birthright i know you're even though old. i don't <laughs> even though i'm too old and sorry bitch you're preaching to the fucking uh about birthright yes i would love to have gone on birthright i think i was jewish enough to do it too and i just i didn't want to go i was scared of israel <laughs> you know bobby bobby went on some weird like kind of like israel funded not birthright, but I basically the same thing yeah. where they bring in like celebrities to um, woo, is that the word, woo? <laughs> and he came back like, oh my God, like it's the greatest. I had such a great time. He was there for like two weeks. I want to go so bad. All my Jewish friends would come back. They'd be like not pregnant, but there's always a pregnancy scare. Uh -huh. They would tell me about they were like riding camels. They all had boyfriend. Like everyone had so much fun on their birthright. Wait, can I be weird and tell you guys about a dream I had? I know that's the worst. I feel like I need to hear the dream before I can answer whether you can. <laughs> okay. I, so when I was in New York, I went out to dinner with like a group of four random hot women that I met. Like, How'd you meet? New uh, friends? Yes. Like they were at my show, but like we were DMing. It was like this like model. And then we didn't like get to say hi at the show. And so we like randomly like, almost like a flirtatious texting led to us like making, sexting. <laughs> making a dinner plan. And like these girls were so cool, loved them, have not followed heard up or back. seen them, have not heard back. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> but last night I had a dream about one of them that she was pregnant and it was from a random hookup. And she texted the guy I'm pregnant with like celebratory emojis and he didn't write back and she like didn't understand why. And I was like, you just texted a random guy you hooked up with that you're pre like, I don't know. It was just a very emotional dream. for Now, me. are you telling this to us because you want to text this to her and you're just seeing yes. if it's if an OK thing to text? Like this could be your in, your back, your in again. A dream. But it's a little you're judge you're judgmental of her in the dream. I am because I'm like, could you imagine hooking up with a guy, a random guy, you get pregnant and then you're like, 
I'm I'm pregnant, like heart emojis. Yes, but why is why are there so many aspects of you? Because these are all you. <laughs> you really like do want to get a girl pregnant. The only in theory is that that everyone in your dream is just a different aspect of yourself. I'm liking this. Okay, so who's the model? <laughs> Where's the model? <laughs> So it's like excitement. And you have been saying a lot that you think we would like our dogs more than our babies. Yeah. I I've, think you're making some mother decisions. Well, I've also, are. now that we're connecting dots a little bit, I'm, I've am i been working a lot on a bit about like wanting to get pregnant it like and have to take the morning after pill, like wanting like a mistake pregnancy. So maybe that's it. But why is that girl involved? And... I don't know. Well, she's a hot girl, so you admire her. We yeah. know that's the number one thing you like. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Yes. Sorry, I'm American. <laughs> you guys, 30 million women are impacted by weakened or thinning hair. And if you're among them, know that you're not alone. It certainly happened to me. When I turned 30, I got off birth control. My hair just started coming off in clumps. I panicked. Um, thank God I've found Nutrafol since. I love that they don't promise an overnight fix. This is something that I've taken that that I've taken every day mm -hmm. for the past couple years, and it really, really works. I have all the women in my family on Nutrafol. My, me and my sister-in-law are looking fresh. And as Nutrafol's powerful ingredients bring your body back into balance, you may also notice improvements to your overall well-being, including more restful sleep, less stress, and better skin and nails. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth, thickness, and visible scalp coverage. Nutrafol supports healthy hair growth from within by targeting the five root causes of thinning, stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, and metabolism through whole body health. They also have a hair wellness quiz that is you can take for personalized product recommendations that are unique to your hair needs. And we've all, all three of us, we have been taking Nutrafol since we started this show. And I feel like it's the one product we all agree on and mm -hmm. swear by. And like you say, you always, you're the one that taught me this. Like it's not an overnight fix. It may take six months and that's how you know it's legit. This is not promising. It's soaking into you. In a clinical- it's Changing. In a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after six months. Nutrivil has three unique formulas to support women throughout all stages of life, including postpartum and menopause. Each formula is physician formulated using natural, drug-free, medical-grade ingredients and consistently effective dosages so you get the most reliable results. 3,000 plus top doctors and stylists recommend Nutrafol as an effective and high quality solution for healthier hair. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering the promo code TRASH to save $10 off your first month subscription. This offer is only available to U.S. customers for a limited time, plus free shipping on every order. Get $10 off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code TRASH. This episode is brought to you by Simply Spiked. Summer is when you get to be your real self. So cool off with the only spiked lemonade that has real fruit flavor, Simply Spiked. It's the summer drink crafted with 5% ABV and 5% real fruit juice, squeezed, then concentrated. And with four bold lemonade flavors and four refreshing peach flavors, summer's getting juicy with Simply Spiked 21 plus only contains alcohol. You guys, this is actually a really refreshing drink and I'm usually picky with what I drink, especially in the summer. And I love that they don't just have peach, they have kiwi peach, they have mango peach, and they have strawberry peach. I feel like I'm looking at my DMs over there. I feel like you're <laughs> drinking my DMs. Peaches? Wait, Kyla, what's your favorite flavor? I love the kiwi peach. That sounds so good. Have you ever gotten a peach emoji sent to you? Um. I can't answer that during an ad. <laughs> it wouldn't be appropriate. And it's not just any hard lemonade. Simply Spiked Lemonades, ready to drink spiked lemonades, broke the internet when they dropped four bold, refresh refreshing flavors last summer. Get real with signature lemonade, strawberry lemonade, blueberry lemonade, and watermelon lemonade, all with a taste of real fruit juice. Summer's getting juicy. Go to drinksimplyspike.com slash trash Tuesday to find out how to get your hands on Simply Spiked Lemonade and new Simply Spiked. That's drinks. SimplySpiked.com slash Trash Tuesday. Flavored beer, naturally flavored with other natural flavors. Simply Spiked Co. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Celebrate responsibly. Simply Spiked is a trademark of the Simply Orange Juice Company. Is this comfortable how you're sitting or are you using core strength? <laughs> oh, this is so comfortable. So okay. knees to my chest is 
to me equals blood return to my heart. So on the plane, I cannot have my feet down when I sleep. I don't know how people do it. How do you guys sleep with your feet down? Like, I feel like I'm going to pass out. Oh, if I'm like sitting up? Like this. How do people sleep like this? No, I can't do that either. But I sleep, which I've been told is very bad for you, but I can't stop myself on the stomach. Like, you like know what I mean? Fish. Like this? Like a, yeah, like a person, like a chalk outline of a dead body. <laughs> Oh, you're just doing baby, like belly time. Speaking of Reddit, enjoy that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oops. It's like with my ass perched out. There's no way it looks good right now. Um, How do you sleep? Fetal or? I was sleeping on my back, but then my sleep apnea, it's like I can't. Do, I excuse snore. me? I do have a little sleep apnea. I discussed this. Mm -hmm. Are we getting a mask? No, 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 no. It's not there. Do you need to come over and try Dave's on? I will never. I will never. I, was, I will rather die. <laughs> That no, you shouldn't choose that. I won't <laughs> choose I oxygen, choose Annie. I choose, death. <laughs> choose air. No, with my claustrophobic, they're just making all these like correlations between like breathing and sleep and stuff. So I started sleeping on my side, but I have to sleep on my left side because if I sleep on my right side, you can get acid reflux and like GERD and stuff. I think left side is always like again. I always think left side of like blood return to the heart. I don't know if wait, that's, that's good or bad. It's supposed to be on this side. Because I've left, heard good, good. I always think of left side as like the good side to lay on. Even I've, when someone isn't like in a medical emergency, my my gut is to be like, oh, lay them on their left side. Okay. I've also heard that your left side is good. Like if you eat too much at dinner and you're still feeling it, like left side is good for yeah. digestion. Is that true, doctor? Well, with sleep, with sleep <laughs> apnea, with sleep, I'm a YouTube watcher. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> uh, with sleep apnea, a lot of times it is like there is some like acid reflux happening too that's causing your that is a real thing and it's giving you like indigestion in your nose which is making your mouth open which is making your mouth breathe i would love to hear you sleep i could diagnose you well then <laughs> keep talking <laughs> <laughs> keep this up i'll pass out anytime <laughs> i want to i want to watch you sleep i want to listen to i'm going to have a stethoscope There's let's pictures. do a sleep study a personal but one. let me tell you on i've already told you this on the plane I fall asleep immediately. My mouth is agape. I look like my parents need to make a very tough decision about whether they're going to unplug me or not. It's. But how do you sleep? Do you, how do you know that you... it'll be a tough decision? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to call and see if they pick up. <laughs> so I have to bring my feet up or I use those little foot hammocks on the plane. I don't know how people like... Do we know about that? Not all flights have those. No, that you must be bring flight. your own. It's BY own hammock. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah, it's a foot hammock. They're like so cheap on Amazon. Can we throw up a little foot hammock? I need one. I'm get that's a that's a, that I feels good just like. Oh my god, they don't it. come in your size. <laughs> <laughs> a little toddler too. Fucking funny. You hammock. attach it to the back of the food tray. And it basically just allows you to bring your legs. I mean, the fact slightly. that Esther and I 100 percent thought that Hawaiian Airlines just had this specific <laughs> thing for. Well, because some seats have those little foot rest things. That yeah. You can, you the know. kickstand. Yeah. A kickstand. Thank yeah. you. A foot hammock. OK, baby. That seems like it would really relieve the pressure on my lower back. Oh, my goodness. Not to sound like a 35 year old, but I could use that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the dog hammock. Did you see the dog hammock up there? It's up at the top. Oh, that's for clipping nails. Oh, poor baby. That's for clipping yeah. nails? Yeah. yeah. I thought it was just to be funny. Haven't you ever like picked up your dog a little early from the groomers and you see them in that contraption? They just look <laughs> at you and you're like, Sorry. By the way, Randy's legs are so long, he'd be and then his feet would be dragging on the ground. <laughs> he'd still be standing. Oh, my God. Um, I love that damn dog. So when you guys just like stand in place, you don't like get dizzy. It hurts. I don't like standing in place. Like not moving, like walking, hiking or whatever, just standing in place. You don't get like lightheaded. I don't know if I get lightheaded, but I'm not kidding you. I hate standing in place. I would and I hate walking slow. Well, you got the right outfit for that. <laughs> <laughs> like physical baby. I would much rather be on a long walk that's like way too long for me than just having to stand still. Same, same. No, 100 percent. And another thing, when you get up from a seated position, um, do you see things right away or does it take about 30 seconds for your vision to I come I think back? you have low blood pressure. I know I do and I probably have POTS, but I think I've been in denial for so long because I'm only starting to ask people if they've they, if this is 
I just thought it was like, oh, everyone doesn't see the first 30 no, seconds when they get up. I've had that when I'm lightheaded. It just means like my blood pressure is low and I haven't eaten enough or something. Yeah. But I have a thing where when I, if I've been sitting too long and I stand up, like I'm frozen. <laughs> so I have to walk like this for a while. Your joint pain? That again is how you walk. It's every yeah. time you do like an example of a weird walk you do, it's your 100% walk, 100%. But that's why like I'm so stiff. Do you could you just like get up and be active? When you do yoga, how does it are you good at um the half pigeon? Yeah, why? Are you very flexible there? Yeah. Cuz I feel like that would make your ass not be so diapery while you walk. No, I'm very flexible there, but also I think I'm over you. I'm breaking up with yoga. It's too much the once a week. <laughs> Have you guys heard of this doctor, like this fitness guru, P Dr. Peter Atia? So he's like, I think he has his own podcast and I've heard him on a lot of podcasts. He's like, just like fitness guy, doctor, like he's pretty smart. I'm like a fan now. Um, but he was on the Goop podcast this week or a few weeks ago and I was just listening to it and he said that he does something, fuck, it's called like rocking or something it has some weird name but where he walks for an hour with a heavy backpack like intentionally like puts a lot of weight in the backpack and he lives in texas and he walks at the hottest part of the day for an hour with a backpack and i was like that sounds so horrible and he's all about like longevity and stuff but i'm like that is kind of the most masculine form of a workout so basically, and that's why you on grab on to to Dave's back while he walks. And that's why I ride his back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, he's like a David Goggins type. Maybe, but Look how over Kalila is. She's like, <laughs> I don't know enough about both of them to compare Would, them. Does he tell you to get after it, Esther? No, he's not like that. He's. I'm telling you, he is more like factual and doctor like. In not the bad ways, even though I know Dr. Molesky. So high noon with the heaviest amount of weight on my back. pretty bad. In Texas. Okay, and that's maybe that's what, you know, gives people certain, like, if that's what they're into, great. But that just seems so not enjoyable. High noon, the world is not even pretty outside. I can't, no, I personally am like, that, I can't even go outside when it's the hottest part of the day. Like, no less walk an hour with a heavy backpack. It sounds insane. But he's like, does he want to... You know, does he want to make you kill your inner bitch? No, he's not like that. I swear. No. Are we sure? I'm pretty sure. The fact that you're starting to follow these like extreme fitness. Starting to? Is so weird. Starting to. Well, starting to open up about it. <laughs> Wait, can we, um, can I see you in a cold plunge? Funny you should ask. Um, in New York, Dave and I did an experiment where we ran a very cold bath because I figured that's a good starter point, And I got half a foot in before <laughs> screaming and Dave was like just fucking do it he was getting mad I can't do it I can't can you yeah no yes I I'm pretty I think Annie is probably the, the best of us because I'm very cold intolerant like the, I, I just don't do well in the cold so I'm probably with you like it would hurt me a but lot but that's kind of what it's about it is about that it sucks. I know, I but it. yeah, there must be something about being like petite that makes it harder, right? <laughs> There's nothing special about you. There's nothing different about you. You're just like everyone else. <laughs> I mean, yes. That's I mean, what that's what David Doggins would say to me. <laughs> Get up and do it. Um, I mean, yes, because you have a lot less body fat than someone like me. A smaller tub. Get her a smaller tub. <laughs> um. And so, you know, maybe we'll bump it up like three degrees. Warmer. I would love to, though. The way it's talked about online, it sounds like everyone gets. You'll feel so good afterwards. These like maximum cool benefits. It's like from something that you don't have to take a drug. Like that sounds amazing. But I I can't do I it. I like sober Esther again. She's back. Esther, how have you been feeling since you got off weed? I did you feel any type of withdrawal did you do it slowly did you taper off I did not do it slowly well I did a two-week break over the holidays and then I did another month break in New wait York. over the holidays you were really depressed yeah I know I was so depressed I couldn't get high oh okay <laughs> <laughs> um and but you were depressed that you couldn't get high or you were too depressed to get high too depressed to get well it started off by I was sick and then like I used that as a way to like take a break but it was 
that time it wasn't that hard because I got into it like through a cold. And then the next time it was really hard. I think I was telling you this maybe, but like I was having digestive issues, like constipated, could not sleep, could not like, not only like couldn't fall asleep, but like couldn't like stay asleep in the mornings, like would wake up in the morning and not be able to fall back asleep, whatever. When you quit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I am, I think it's like, I was giving myself so much like blame and shame for wanting to like do weed every night. And then I remembered, I was like out walking in New York one night and I was like, every single person in the city right now is at a bar getting drunk and it's Tuesday. And I was like, oh yeah, people drink, people like have fun. And then I just decided I didn't want to be so hard on myself. And so like, it's okay for me to get high a couple nights here and there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I just am not able to do a couple nights. I go too hard. So that's why I don't do it at all. So then what do you have as your like substitute for that? Like, because most people go home from work. They want a glass of wine. Like, do you have something like that? I just really try to like meditate and stuff. It sounds so lame, but it's there's lame. nothing else. There's nothing else I have. I'm doing a, I have a ketamine treatment after this. Ooh, yeah, exciting. home thing. Is it, um, do they give you um, IV or intramuscular? No, it's like a lozenge. It's in home, like over Zoom. No shit. Mm -hmm. That's, how fun. I'm kind of jealous. Yeah, I'll tell you how it is. Yeah. A lozenge. But huh? yeah, it's like a lozenge. And then you have, there's like, a, I picked out the person that's going to sit with me, like what their credentials mm. are and stuff. It's cool. I love that. Yeah, mine was not like that. It was like, when you get the IM, I think within 45 seconds, you're in the moon mm -hmm. i'm like make it stop make it <laughs> they're stop. like too late <laughs> yeah. do you still do the ketamine like the sparingly use it on no. your own no and oh, why'd you no, stop that i'm i couldn't i just have cluster headaches can't um, eat or do anything really yeah <laughs> so cluster headaches kind of like wiped your but i wasn't really doing it anyway i was already like kind of ready to stop doing anything but i stopped weed so long ago i haven't done weed in so long and done weed that's how long it's been. I say it like a mom. <laughs> You're saying it like me now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I never feel sober because I'm crazy and fun. Do you know what I mean? I never Dude, feel like I'm like. Do you know who's nuts? Who? Fucking George Kimmel. What? We had, because Bobby was filming in Hawaii. So we were there for like a week together recording Tiger Belly. And basically he's like, hey, like, is there anywhere on the island I can get acid? Because I want to do it on the plane ride home. Oh. Oh, I'm like, are you kidding me, George? I was like, if you were to do that, why don't you just do it in the company of like your friends? He's like, no, 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 no. He's like, when like you're I want to leave this beautiful place. <laughs> he wanted to do acid on the Did fucking plane. No, he didn't. But I'm like, dude, this guy really gets after it. That he wants to kill funny. his inner bitch. Yeah. It's always the people that are like really like look like they live a straight and narrow life that like want to go the hardest when you let loose. Yeah, and it's always the people like me who seem like I would like yeah, be such like, a party yeah, girl. Yeah, give coke on you at all times. Right? <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's the most accurate description like, of like, I, I honestly look like I would just be like a really coked out whore. But I, I, I don't. I'm so terrified of drugs. But then you have George Kimmel who's like, you know, this. And he wants to do acid on a five hour flight. I like that. All right, George. Wait, do you have your like, what do you have? get home from work at five o'clock want to kick back and open a beer nothing wine. nothing maybe food yeah yeah food's a big thing for me but i do drink once in a while you do i really really love mezcal i like we did it on the live i drank yeah was that tequila or mezcal when on our live wasted? from my belly button i <laughs> i recently was on my phone you know how, like on your phone you have a lot of old like yeah, safari like browsers that. and i saw one that was like can you get drunk through your belly button <laughs> yeah better days if you guys weren't at the live show esther what happened did you take a shot off no, my belly button you took you... a shot out of her belly button oh, that's and right. i felt she the she was... and i felt the alcohol like <laughs> seep in and i was a little buzzed we got to throw her in a cold plunge now. The skin and the belly <laughs> button is very thin. That's an opening, essentially. What did Google say? They never tied you off when you were born? There was like, a <laughs> hole in there? <laughs> they were he like, she's out, connected. she's fine. She's, she's still still, it costs extra. <laughs> That's what she does couch. when she goes home to Chicago. Mary's behind the couch. <laughs> <laughs> it's your G-tube. That's how you get fed, though. <laughs> 
Oh my God. Yeah, no, I did mushrooms for, with the cluster eggs, but it's like, there's no joy in those anymore. <laughs> Someone was, oh, Josh Potter was like, I have all these mushrooms. I was like, I'm good. Hmm. I cannot fucking do that. Still haven't done them, but I will. Like, They're fun. Been microdose? Mm-mm, never. I heard that in like it's looking like in 2024, 2025, it's gonna psilocybin will be legalized. Oh, it's perfect. legal in DC. What? You can buy it. You can buy mushrooms in DC at a store. That's and incredible. I know they had that in Portland, which makes sense for Portland. Isn't it so <laughs> weird? It's in DC. I know I could be like, maybe that's what's going on with Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> She's tripping. That's why he's talking about blueberries all the time. You know what I was thinking about Joe Biden? You know how like presidents famously like at the start of their presidency versus the end, they look like they've aged 30 years. But like with Joe Biden, he has nowhere to go. (laughs) It's like so scary to think about what it'll look like at the end. Oh, my goodness. But Um. um, not to um, toot my own horn, but I think I am probably one of the funnest drunks you were fun in the at your world. Birthday. I don't know why. This is why alcohol c- can be dangerous or has been dangerous for me because I am. You, you didn't watch Friends. You were a Seinfeld girl, right? Thank you. Um, do you remember Fun Bob, the episode in Friends where I think mm-hmm. it's like, um, um. Anyways, there's this character named Fun Bob, and everyone loves him, and he's like the new boyfriend that he's in, that's introduced to the group. But they find out later that he's just an alcoholic. <laughs> Right. Totally. And that's why he's just so lovable and kind of like. Um, oh, I do remember. You those. remember him? Yes. Um, but that's such a funny storyline. I am. I've kind of never really had um, like, you know, people black out and they get into like crazy shit and they're people are like you should never drink again. Yeah. I always get the opposite reviews. We were like, you are so fucking you are. Fun and You're amazing. Funny. And on our live show when you were drunk, it was so fun. But I wasn't drunk, Plus drunk. Spitting out the that <laughs> nasty fucking dental dam. There's no dam big enough. <laughs> Let's dental dam next week on the show for old time's sake. Um, what was I going to say about drinking? Oh, um, yeah. I, my regret going, is not meeting stopped. you in my twenties. You know, we would have been dead. Because listen, I'm. I was very fun. My friend Abby was like, she's like, I love you. I'm so glad you quit drinking. But I do want to say that look, drinking with you is the most fun I've ever had in my entire life. We were getting pulled out of places. <laughs> we were like, in parts like, fuck you. There was this Puerto Rican guy with a lazy eye. I'll never forget. Like, saving <laughs> us. Like, back off all my girls. We would just like find people to protect us while we were acting crazy. Yeah, it was fun. Fun girl Annie. Yeah. <laughs> But then it was like checking for teeth and stuff. There was a lot. Of <laughs> in the later years, there was a lot of blood. A lot of blood. Is that why you have fake blood? Just to like remem- remind kind you of, of the good old I days? Do, it makes me feel at home. Yeah. <laughs> it's so pathetic to have a one pound weight. Why? I've, you, I have, I this do that. This is just, of course. Did, did you, you ever do? I thought Kalila had a one pound weight. Did this, you ever, is it, this is her, her yoni egg. Did you ever do pop physique? Um, they I had one did, yeah, did I did you? go to yeah, Pop one pound. Physique. Oh, it's really? called Pop Physique still around? I, I don't think no so. Idea. I don't it think was so. the thing. They blew up in like the early 2010s of LA. I kind of want to do a bar class again too. Bar I'm method. getting back into classes. I know, I classes love everything. Classes. Everything like that died in COVID is coming back. I know. Me. But this is Carnival like Cruise? A... Anyone? No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> But smart enough to have um, bought some stocks when it went all the way down. I I so regret not doing that. I do. (laughs) The idea of a cruise is like my style. Like I'm white trash. It's like a mall. You know, there's a casino on it. But then you get on and you're like, this just, the fact that this is where we're at and that's it. What do you mean? Like, you're just like, I can't, there's a parameter of where you can go. You're you're like, essentially you're you're, um, Jim Carrey in that movie. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like a uh, Truman show. You're on the Truman show. Like you can only go so far. Right. The the boat is as far as you go. Except did you guys see Triangle of Sadness? Yes. Of course. The best movie. God, Favorite ever. ever. So, yeah. so Abigail is Abigail. my hero. So funny. <laughs> my freaking hero. Who am I? She goes, who am yeah. I? <laughs> when she what, has the freaking, she catches the fish. <gasps> Abigail's a Filipino lady who just. No, I remember. Who yeah. She was, yeah. Yeah. But which one are we? I'm Woody Harrelson when I was drinking. I think I want to be the like the hot girl, the model. The model. Yeah. Not. You're the hot girl model. Yeah. And then I'm the boyfriend that fucks her. Yeah. But you know who you are? You're the um there's the guy the captain. 
who has you know how they they go into this whole like um communist versus yeah like that whole deep conversation yeah. they have on the boat that's you i love him what woody harrelson or the other guy the other guy wait did you guys see the menu yeah, yeah. i did kind what of did similar we... vibes yeah not as good not but as like good. fun they yeah. i saw the preview for it it's like i wish i'd gone in completely blind but i did like the it oh the, the preview like gave stuff away yeah just you knew it wasn't just like a fun I, but i'm so john leguizamo in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey everybody did you see that guy notice me <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. felt it. And like, I would definitely still like keep my assistant that was stealing from me. <laughs> the only thing, the biggest you know? problem I had with that movie is why he had to go on such a tirade against s'mores. Like there's nothing wrong with s'mores. <laughs> They're not classless. They're I want to put you, I want to <laughs> fucking put you between two pieces of chocolate. <gasps> Thank you. You're the marshmallow. I will squish you. <gasps> um, but cruises are, have you been on one? Yeah, I went on a mother-daughter cruise. You went on a mother-daughter cruise? Well, because my dance teacher got a job as a dancer on a cruise ship, so a big group of us went. Like, So it our... wasn't just you and your mom? Yeah, no, it was a group of us. And it wasn't your mom's idea? No, <laughs> fuck no, <laughs> absolutely not. Your mom's not. like, we need to spend more time together. <laughs> but there was, I like dan my dance classes were in a neighborhood that was like much wealthier than the one we lived in, and there is, uh, I'll, we'll never forget a mother daughter that went on the cruise. Like we flew to Florida, we get on the cruise from Chicago to Florida. We get on the cruise, and then there's a note on their door that says, "I'll never forget." Too close of quarters. We'll see you back in Illinois. So they <laughs> flew there and then left because it was not nice enough for them. My That's mom and so I were funny. like, we could like, um, it's just something I couldn't believe. Like, what are you talking about? As like a you know, a low class peasant. But then, okay, so did the cruise take you somewhere? Because the cruise I went on, I went on Ship Rocked. That's where I met Papa Roach. Oh, my God. Um, and they took us to Cabo, but it was just like an island built for the cruise, which I was like, ew. It was just like <laughs> nasty. It was like a Harley Davidson and a Margaritaville. I was like, what the hell? But Sammy the mall just like extended out to a tiny island it was like probably like all like sammy hagar kind of yes it was and it's like all the people that work there i was talking to them i was like do locals come in they're like no it's just cruise people like what a fucking nightmare what who did you go with i went with it was big j oh this is like a comedy show oh okay that's cool no as a kid i don't think my family's not like my mom like isn't we now were you constipated on the cruise Probably. <laughs> no, because, you know, we talked about this on a previous episode where they add stuff in the food. So it kind of mm. serves as like a laxative effect so that they don't clog the pipes on the boat. Oh. So did you like, you know, take was, note of your... I don't remember, but I always was... I mean, my constipation wow. was very much alive and well in high school. Constant. <laughs> Someone call it constant. <laughs> <laughs> but and after my, my dance teacher got that job, obviously my dream became to be a dancer on a cruise ship. And I auditioned once. And you it, should go do that. It did not go well. <laughs> I would. I don't tempt me. <laughs> Ask if I could, your job. if I could get the job, I would do it. Oh my no, god! No, you. There is no way you can't episodes. compete against Filipino entertainers. <laughs> you can't. Cruise ships are Filipino entertainers. That's like one of our biggest imports. Is like, like entertainment, right? We send them off into the UAE to become, <laughs> um, you know performers on cruise ships and bars whatever you cannot outdance a filipino i don't think esther and i believe in you i think you're an amazing dancer you would have never gotten that job i believe you yeah i've never seen you more strict <laughs> <laughs> and now that i know that it's in your blood and we have this but you, are you is this a dance-off being plotted here what do you mean? No, 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 no. Oh, think, no. I think we need a dance off. I'll no, there's no nice. way. No, <laughs> no way. We either need a cruise ship themed episode. I don't know what we dress like, but we need to do it. We just all get seasick. <laughs> <laughs> or we like carnival cruise polo uniforms. You've got to stop with the polo uniforms. I'm never going to. stop. I've got plenty lined up and locked and loaded in. in the closet <laughs> waiting for you. Oh my God, every episode's like UPS themed. It's like, oh my God, go get a job, bitch. Go get a job. Yes. Wait, we have to do that. Okay, wait. She's like, how about we work at Chili's? Do you think we have a market, a big enough market where we could do one Trash Tuesday cruise, set, set sail in the open sea? What, have a cruise? Yeah, our own cruise. A trash, yes. 
Maybe we can do the European version. Yes, you we know, could have a fucking very cruise. Short trips and you go through the islands and you go to Greece and Italy. that I would rather do. I, I don't want to go to the one that just like I, yeah, it's like a slug cruise. Yes, <laughs> I don't want to go to the one that just parks in outside of Ensenada. Right, and they're like, here, walk out and look at the blowhole. The whole thing's so weird. It's like <laughs> and get am drunk, I get come back on a fake island by this fucking cruise. Yeah, and here's the thing. Unless we're going through some like cool fjords or something and seeing like orcas like no thank you or alaska i have heard an alaskan cruise can be lovely I'm but curious. from who <laughs> i need to know the source my dad <laughs> he's never been on one <laughs> but he heard it from someone else yes. <laughs> yeah um yeah you would have to drag me I've never been on a cruise, but I'm pretty sure you guys would have to almost poison me and like drug me to get. We'll give you cruise. some uh, devil's uh, <laughs> Not breath. A devil's we breath. Have, <laughs> we have your permission on camera now, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> a little devil's breath. You wake up pregnant with Esther's baby. We don't know what happened. I really wish there was a Titanic themed cruise. Oh my God. Where it's like things go wrong and, you know, maybe you fall. You know what's so annoying? I would be Jack and you would like let me fucking <laughs> down, bitch. <laughs> Esther, is part of it like poverty porn where you want to be in like the lower levels like and be like Jack? It's not poverty porn. I've already been on the lower levels. <laughs> I'll draw you naked. <laughs> yeah. No, it's more it's it's like like a cruise where something goes wrong and they say we've hit an iceberg and we're not sure and you know some of the people on the ship are like, actors you're telling us you're suicidal you're like, I just want to be dead. some of them are actors yeah some people are actors it's like tina and tony's but yes yes <laughs> Maybe yes like escape room you know something like that but yeah. Yeah. you know i um your dreams are big there's smaller <laughs> local things you can do i'm dreaming too big <laughs> I wrote uh, like a six page letter and actually mailed it to Leonardo DiCaprio. And I had spent like months <laughs> after Titanic came out and I had dried all of these flowers. You know, when drying oh flowers God. was a I'm thing. so upset. And you smashed it. And then it took me like, I think two months to get them like perfect. And I, I wrote him this amazing letter and I even quoted the movie talking about like, there's only like ten dollars in my pocket which i didn't even have in my pocket oh, and i remember no. spending saving all the money that i recently earned from like winning gold as a swimmer <laughs> and for the philippine national team and putting setting aside a certain amount so i could mail it to america because it was money for when you were a kid i won a dance contest once what was it i don't think i won a it was before the greece musical and i won a free t-shirt I won in a landslide, though. Wait, so was it, you didn't sign up for it? You just were there and they're like, kids, come up and dance? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, no, I and when I say landslide, I really mean it. And now I do want to, though, go back to <laughs> Kalila. I know, I was going to let think? her off the hook for a second. No, <laughs> no, actually what Kalila is telling us right now, you need to confirm with me, it's sadder than anything I've ever it's said. It's the saddest, done. it's worse than any poem I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so am I Yeah, what did you say? A reply? The what did you no. say in the letter for 10 pages? There is a line in Titanic where he tells Rose that- All I have is- Yeah, like basically 10, 10 cents pages? in his pocket. How did you get through that? I told him who I was, what I do, what my dreams are, why I really like him, what part of the movies really like right. spoke to me, that I have a poster Can over I my bed. Can I support you in this for a second? <laughs> how old were you? I was 12. Okay, as a 12 year old, I mind you, you I don't already usually have much to offer. Are you trans age? You're a 12 year old? As a 12 year old boy, yes. <laughs> From the waist up, yes, I am. Um, as a 12 year old, nobody really has much to offer. You were an award winner. You were a. You were so she had a champion. chance. You had a um, shot. You were a little old for him, but. Um, <laughs> but he was only, what, how old was he at this time? How old is he now? I have no clue. I think he's only like eight or nine years older, so. That, yeah. Maybe like um, 50 now, 50. And then I told him that one day I'd have these braces off, that I'm gonna be, I'm gonna grow up to be really pretty. Maybe not right now, but I promised him I would be pretty as soon as my braces came off. You promised Leonardo DiCaprio you'd be pretty. I mean, you, you came through on the promise. Hmm. Thank you. That's very sad. So you wrote this letter with the intention of. <laughs> it's not the letter. It's the flowers. It's just, no. It's, it's the, the letter. You don't think it's the crushed flowers? That was really though to give her credit. Like that was of the time. Everyone was doing Who that. Who did when you send it to? I didn't send them to anyone because I knew woman, better. I didn't have confidence. No, but my sister was drying. Like she hung 
dried flowers in her room and then I did it to copy you her. Smash them in the middle um, between books? Oh, yeah. Or like mm-hmm. put them in tape. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, what's it called? The thick clear Who would tape? you have sent a letter to? Well, you never sent fan crunch? mail. Any of you guys ever send fan I mail? I did. Look but at it, her face. Mine was, you're going to, this is so <laughs> estery how I did it. <laughs> Don't worry. What, you found their house? <laughs> Broke in? <laughs> I lived like, in their basement for three years. <laughs> Somehow made I- Made them cook for you and stuff? <laughs> made them fold your laundry? <laughs> Somehow in the 90s internet, I stumbled upon a site that told you like which celebrities, if you mailed them, would send you back a signed headshot. And so I wrote to those celebrities, but I think the only one I was ever successful with was Barbra Streisand. But she, she sent back to her fans a signed headshot. Do you think She did. Am I breaking your heart right now? Honestly, knowing Barbara. Do you know her? (laughs) (laughs) Wow, New York was fruitful. (laughs) Okay. I do think it was her because those old school classy classic stars, like they take- Have assistance. They take their stardom very seriously. And I do, I could see Barbara signing headshots like every morning for an hour. I could see that. I well, can't. yeah, she signed them, but do you think she was like, got your letter and then was like, I'm going to send this? Absolutely not. No. Oh, okay, because I was like, this is the, del- I'm, I have to break this heart of this delusional. The deluluness. Wait, do you guys know? This is my favorite pop culture fact of all time. I'm like getting the chills just thinking about it. Barbara Streisand, do you know what's in her basement? Esther. My mouth is watering. <laughs> my, no, my, my mouth is watering. She has a replica of a shopping mall in her basement so she can like walk down to her basement and it looks like an outdoor mall with little shops and boutiques and do are people working there that i don't know (laughs) can you can you imagine your own play pretend mall (laughs) i I think i feel like every young girl's had that fantasy for sure i gotta see look it's oh barbara strassen i love the way fancy (laughs) those things no 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 He's a fancy way of guessing people's spells. <laughs> Basement. Mall. Shopping. Yeah. <laughs> like Vegas. What was that sound? Like Vegas. <laughs> Do you see? Yes, it's so Vegas. Like, like, look at this. Oh, a candy shop. I remember one time when I was little, my dad's friend, um, who was a drug addict, got into a car accident, and he had to go to one of those, he had to go to a nursing home, and we would go visit him, and in the basement there, they had, like, fake... Um, ice cream shops and stuff it was really fun that's so sad thank you <laughs> wait they let you into the how did you sneak into the the nursing home the nursing home You're yeah like, let me in i'm ready, <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> no i know i would have loved to move it <laughs> moved in You're like this is the coolest you're the only person that, like loves a nursing home. i'm like i can't wait <gasps> Scoop your own ice cream? No, my grandfather went to like a really nice retirement home and I loved going there. Did they have like perks? No, there was no per- There was a billiards room that I really liked. I really enjoyed like a library, dark library billiards room type thing because I liked the game Clue. So I felt like I was in the game Clue. Okay, murder mystery dinner and on the books. Let me tell you. Oh, <laughs> thing on the books. Uh, <laughs> um, he. I remember they had like a red for the stairs. They had like this red carpet that went up it. And they had these like those poles that was like keeping it on. And I thought that was like so elegant and cool. It's just old people. And the dining room had um had like veal with a mint sauce. I enjoyed mm. eating being with the elderly and eating a baby. Oh cool. Veal. No, it would do- okay. You guys saw the shopping mall and you agree it's the coolest thing to ever exist. Or- yes, but for not it to exist for longer than one week, you know, that's like an event thing. But to just have it there, what is it doing? It's just collecting dust? She's fake shopping down there? Well, you could say that about everything is collecting dust. But to go to go to the fake shopping mall. Well, you're Barbara. You're a than, star. You can't go to the normal malls. So she hires people to pretend. She makes her own Truman Show. In the yes. <laughs> Are you're, that was you're like at, one of my favorite um, celebrity couples was Barbara Streisand and Andre Agassi. They were together? They were together. I know. I just always imagine her being with what's his name? Rolling forever. She was with Andre Agassi for mm-hmm. a couple of years. She was always at like courtside at all the Grand Slams. Didn't he date Brooke Shields too? Um, I'm not sure, but now he's with Steffi Graf. Oh, really? Yeah, they've been, they have kids. Like they stayed, they're like lovers forever. Um, Steffi Graf is a German um, um, tennis player. My, who I would have sent letters to mm. is not someone that's still around. 
We're listening. I think I've brought him up on this show before, and I would love to see where he is now because I believe he is a cult leader. I hope oh, it's not uh, Andrew guy. Keegan. Andrew Keegan. Andrew Who is Keegan that? was my teen bop boy. I think that was like a lot of our. I was teen so bop. attracted to him. I was like so. Well, he lives attracted. in Venice, and he got busted for. Um, I know the church illegal thing. kombucha. But I don't. I don't feel the way I felt now when I look at him. But God, I was like when he was a kid. I was like he's so hot. I know what you mean. The oh, hair and shit. He has Dave hair. Wait, what was he famous from? He's hot. I remember him. He was in. Um, there was a show called. It was only like one season. There were like little things I caught him in. I was he was also in 10 Things I Hate but About 10 You. 10 Things I Hate About You. But by then, I had got... Camp Nowhere was where I was obsessed with him. Mm. Camp Nowhere was my fucking movie. He is Did you hot. watch Camp Nowhere? No, but that guy's hot as fuck. You would have loved Camp Nowhere. Except actually, no, you like parents. <laughs> it was about like not having parents. But can I just say this? I, You know, men really love to talk a lot about how they age better and women don't... They wh- talk about it. They're just sitting around talking about it no i've heard guys have said this to me like oh it's too bad it's harder women don't age well men age better but by the way women say that too and it bums me out when i because it's like that's something i've heard women say like even i've heard myself say that yeah no because we've been like trained to believe that you think these guys are like sitting around in like a basement mall yeah (laughs) having a fake tea (laughs) they are not allowed in barbara's mall (laughs) um but i have to say when we look at our teen idol boys they they don't look hot anymore. So it goes both ways. That's all. <laughs> yeah, like Devin Sawa. But Devin Sawa's not bad. I'd love to have him on the show. I think he's still super He's around. Cute. Mm-hmm. He's high up we there. You guys... get all these people before, you know, we're getting older now. People are over- ODing and shit. I know we got to get him while I'm still single so I can sit here and squirt in my panties. <laughs> Oh my God, it's so sad when they pull the pictures of these like old starlets that are like just not actresses anymore, just living their lives as just regular women. Probably happy and, and fulfilled. Like, and It's like, why are you putting, they're not, they're not doing anything. Why is the paparazzi taking, they're like putting pictures of Bridget Fonda. I'm like, let Bridget Fonda live. What are you doing? Oh, that's right. Because she she's married do... to um... Danny Elfman. Yeah, Danny Elfman. She quit. She quit acting. She's just like a regular woman. And then people are like, look at how terrible. It's like, leave her alone. Actresses are regular women too. What's that? <laughs> no, she's not in the. She's not in What's the spotlight. That? What's that? That's thing? so What's something that, that a grandpa would say to any. In no, a I'm response like, to anything the, I say. I really was like, could not believe what you were saying. I'm like, What's that, lad? Well, I'm just like, what angle are we going for here, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't a JTT girl. Were you a JTT? Girl? I was never. No. Never. I, I think we all had similar tastes when we were younger because I was a Leo girl, obviously, from Titanic. Were you not? I was a Leo girl from um, uh, Romeo and Juliet. <gasps> yeah. I told you I stole. I went into the... I actually think this is one of the worst things I did as a kid besides egging Robert Daniele's house. Sorry, Mrs. Daniele. <laughs> um, but I went into my library, my local library, and they had like the magazine section and I just stole all the magazines and cut them up and put them on my wall. That's like so crazy because that means that like now if I went back, they're not there. Do you know what I mean? It's like that was an archive of magazines that would have existed forever. And I yeah, stole them. I'm sure that's, that happens more than you think. I think it's a very forgivable. Have a little, I have an archive of magazines. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. Wait, what was I going to say? What did you just say? Stealing magazines? Leo, crushes. Um, Romeo and Juliet. Library. Library. Oh, my God. Romeo and Juliet. Library. I really liked the libraries a lot for a girl who <laughs> I had nothing to do inside them. <laughs> Except collage. <laughs> I was like, send me to the books with the pictures. You would love the Skokie library. We recently updated it. And now there's a whole craft. We did? Did we? Did. we? The, uh, the taxpayers. <laughs> there's a craft. You're still paying taxes there? <laughs> Uh-oh, Esther, get her IRS. I'm still an Illinois resident. We um, There's a craft room that has 3D printing, and so I you would, you'd you love it. You'd have a lot to do. Oh, 3D printers, that, that's a pretty fun thing to do. Yeah. Um, I recently learned that, you know what howler monkeys are? I do, no. but remind. But it's they're just the loudest loud monkeys in right? the jungles. Yeah. Like so fucking yeah. loud, you can't miss them. But I recently learned that they have like the tiniest dicks of like all the primates. Oh, that's so cute. But doesn't that correlate like the loudness with the size of a I'm penis? I'm very loud and I have a huge penis. <laughs> so I don't know what She proves doing. it all wrong. No, I also like my big penis boyfriends were very loud. Really? They wouldn't shut the fuck up. They were so loud and they the world needed to hear them and they had to sling their cock around all the ladies. 
Oh, so there's no correlation then to humans. So you're saying big dick dudes are the loud fucks? I think just uh, people are loud or they're not. I think it's more about what who listened to you and who didn't when you were a kid. <laughs> Maybe my favorite thing is when a dude's like super humble and kind of quiet, a little bit of a wallflower. And then they have the a big biggest dick. Those are the long game big dick guys. I love the Wait. ones who just like look like they couldn't ever make you come, but then are so good because they're super nerdy. Like nerdy boys always surprise me because you think that, oh, you know, they're just, you know, this and that. And then they're just really great and studious. That's why it's good for everyone to keep expectations low on the outside low expectations in the streets and uh, big dicks in the sheets. yeah <laughs> i have a question have you ever had good sex the nope. first time <laughs> with anyone like yeah. the first time you've ever had sex with someone has it been like oh that was actually like mm -hmm. good or has it always been like some fumbling some kind of like weird awkward teeth banging i think good but only to an extent like where it's good because it's so fun and exciting because you like the person. Okay, I should ask this. Have you ever had great sex the first time? Mm -hmm. Really, Annie? I think me too, actually. I, was, uh, <laughs> I no, just remembered something. I was worn down so hard. It was like, I mean, this, I was worn down. Like this was like months of this guy coming into my work and I was like, he was hot, but he was so stupid. He was so dumb. He was, <laughs> he was like a, a like BMX bike kid. He just had like, brain i was like are you okay i could see him like like his brain working to form words <laughs> and i was like oh, i don't want it and he was just like i don't know i always had a thing where when guys hit on me it like offended me i was like you did this with all the girls like when todd and todd and first came over to my house he brought um which is so cute he brought like toll house cookies to make or you know, like he bought like the so cookie dough. Cute. And I was so, I was like, do you do this with all your dates? And he was like, no. I was like, okay, I don't know why I'm mad. Wait, when you said that you get offended a guy's hit on you, it made me think of a different version of that, which is my favorite thing I've seen you do or you've told me about where like when a guy hits on you and you're like, are you, like you're offended. It's like, <laughs> no. <laughs> and if there there's something, you know what it was? It was like when I was younger, my older brother's friends would like, hit on me and I thought that they just felt like they had an advantage. Like they just assumed they could hook up with me because they were older. Mm, I don't know, I always was like, yeah. I just didn't like guys that thought that they could hook up with me because it felt unsafe. It felt like they were just like. Okay, so you're telling me, actually, I, I, I think you're correct. It is possible to have amazing sex the very first time. I, it was like, this guy was so stupid that everything else was crazy. It so was by the time you guys got together, it felt like he took me, okay, this guy, <laughs> he had like a, like a truck that was like on monster wheels, okay? <laughs> and uh, he was so fucking hot though, Homeless Julian. Oh, he this wasn't is Homeless, homeless but, Julian, yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, he took me like into the Arroyo and like drove me around. He showed me a good time. He showed me a good old country time. Was his sex amazing because was, there was an emotional connection already? No, there was no emotional connection. There was zero emotional connection. It was like, I was in shock what he did to me. I had I dumb that. guy sex once and it was not good. It this was I mean I've had bad dumb guy sex oh, okay. too but this was like I don't know but I he it wasn't I didn't go I didn't go back for more. You didn't. Mm -mm. Wow, it's just like he a gave one me BV. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also he was like uncircum I don't know, there he was a threw, lot of, He threw your pH off. So it wasn't he threw a my chemical. pH off. I mean it probably could have worked out but he just was so stupid. I hung out with him like one more time. And I think I told you this he like he was like he was like running I had my motor scooter and he was like running next to my motor scooter because he wouldn't, he wanted to ride it, but I told him he would have to like ride on the back and he was like, I would never ride <laughs> of a girl riding, will never drive me around on the motor scooter. It's a healthy boundary. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, we just, it was. I think I've only had one of those, just one, one time where the first time was exceptionally good. Tell us more. Um, he just knew what to do. Yeah, sometimes people just yeah, know what just, to do. He's just a great like he's he was experienced. He 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 was really good at you know eating a girl out. He was really just good at everything. But his like he, it's more than just that, right? It's like the energy of someone when they're in the bedroom. He his energy was just perfect. He was calm. He was confident, and he wasn't a creep. He wasn't overly aggressive. He was just there for like I don't know something really awesome. I ended up falling in love with him because it was that great. Who is this? Secret recent. I ended up being obsessed with him. 
obsessed. But this is um this is jealous. Don't act like you're trying to figure it out. You're just mad. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, if I look like I'm thinking, I won't say I'm crying. <laughs> Um, we'll bang it out one but I think with Todd too like Todd and I had really good sex in the beginning because first of all he's just so cute and it was like he kept coming over to my house and not making a move and I was like that I'm is, just so that over gets me. I'm over like I was like the because I had dated that guy before him who was like I don't know if I had like told you I'm sure I told you everything but he would be like I want to be the girl and I want you to be the boy and I'm like I'm the fucking girl like it was like you have to like he didn't want to like put himself out there to like make moves he was like I want you to make moves so then he's in the position to reject me I'm like no 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 and he would say it like out loud he'd be like I want to be like I'm like you're not the girl I'm sorry you're short why did he say that did he say why he wanted that he just was like he was like it's so annoying that I have to be the guy and you guys get to be the girls I want to be the girl Oh, he just was having an identity crisis. He just, crisis. listen, he's, I, he's a very, he's a great guy. Wait, so you're saying that Todd took a while to make He took move. a while and I was getting annoyed because I was like, oh my God, do I have another girl? Like, it's uh, a girl. And then but he was scared because every guy that, that hesitate, because every guy, most guys do hesitate to hit on me because obviously I'm a little, I, it's always, they always tell me why and it's always that I basically said like I hate when guys hit them like I basically said like do not do the things I want you to do thinking that I'm talking about a different you know what I mean like not them you know it didn't even occur to me that they'd be like take, but every guy is always like you know you were like I hate when a guy does this or that I'm like oh okay um, that makes sense so Todd was like afraid and then he um, he asked like this girl that we were, that we were both friends with he was like can you just like see when she comes down sure here that. yeah because he didn't we worked together and stuff like how far into the hanging out was that we had been hanging out for a while i would go complain to him about other boys like i go on a bad date and we'd like oh, if i were you and he wasn't like it took a while i'd be like gushing and no pain. exactly so then it was like so yeah and he was yeah he todd did like a thing where he like crawled on the ground like fucking leonardo dicaprio and <laughs> and uh what's it called in that movie you know what's the movie Wolf of Wall Street, yeah, yeah. he's like crawling to me. It was cute. He was so cute. Yeah, he was very kind of hot. It was really hot. Yeah, I might just say cute because he's you know. I am with you though that like the longer a guy takes yeah. to make a move, it is just like amazing. And they're like, I assume he likes me, and then you're like, wait, does this motherfucker not fucking like me? Yeah. Am I getting friend zoned? That's yeah, so, so that hot. Was, like, really Please hot friend zone me. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's just. It's so, it's like a really I'm big, honestly so horny. No, it's like right one now, or the like other my, though. My, my jaws got tight. The guy just takes it right away too and is like, that's what I want. No. I, no, because then it's like, it's just so obvious that that's what they yeah. want that it's a turn off. Right. But for like, the, these are, I'm telling you, these are two people that I had great sex with the first time. One I'm going to marry and have kids with. And one I fucked once and he gave me bacterial vaginosis. Right. But you right. know what I mean? But yeah. He did make right. me come and it was. Okay. Cool. So I think you're on to something. It's like, let me earn you a little bit. Cause I'm somebody who, like, I get my, like, I've gotten a certain level of like male validation like my whole life. It's not hard to come by. It hasn't been like historically hard to come by. So when someone kind of just holds off just a little bit, it dry it makes me so uncomfortable. It's a pattern interrupt too. Yeah, exactly. It is you're a pattern your, interrupter. Yeah, you're, you're, Wait, it makes you uncomfortable? Yeah, because she's I'm not, not, not zone. she's not it's it's a person listen. who is like telling I'm so sorry, Esther. <laughs> as someone that has recently fallen into this it's been like this always <laughs> and it makes you uncomfortable if a guy doesn't like you if <laughs> if you're not getting like <laughs> yeah like because i've been a boyfriend girl my whole life i there's never really been a time where i haven't been this is the why sure a guy's guy. into you or somebody's into me some i know that i can if 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 i screamed out the window someone would come running mm -hmm. do you know what i mean like you kind of have that you're like you know, like I know I could fuck tonight if I wanted to. I know I can have whatever fix, crack, whatever dopamine hit I need from a fucking guy. But when someone is just so like what Todd was, which was like, I'm going to take my time. I'm not fully sure yet. It just drives me into like a level of horniness that like I can't even like, like my jaws are tightening right now thinking about it. Pause. Do you also have this, um, for lack of a better term, entitlement to male validation? Like, do you? I this is I need to know this because 
I did not ever have this like you just suggested. When have you people, always felt like not always, but I always knew I had something going on. Right. I was like getting molested by like teachers. Just, exactly. Like, I something going on. Like everyone's trying. To, it's true. People that weren't supposed to be trying to fuck me were trying to fuck me. So not that you feel hot from that, but it's like, and, you know, like I knew myself as a sex object. And by the way, it's not which always was annoying. But, well, it's not necessarily attention that I wanted. Some of it, but a lot of it was very me. negative. A lot of it was not like a positive experience saying like, oh, I know a boy likes me. Sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah. that person, I, and then it's me so annoying. That I don't want. No, of course, and it sounds so bad annoying. too. Wait, yeah. also, this makes so much sense, Annie, that when we first met, I felt like we were so similar in our personalities. Like we had so much in common, but the way you are able to reject men it, w- it almost felt like a foreign language to me. Like when you would, like truly, when you, when a guy would hit on you and you'd laugh at them. Because I didn't look at it as like a finite yeah. resource. You're like, I, I got to keep this. <laughs> it's like, I will never forget that. It's impacted on me forever. Like that you laughed at guys who hit on you. You're like, no. I mean, it's mean though. It's also mean. It's like, no, but the how, guys it, that what it, mixed signal? The guys that it was, it wasn't mean. They were mean guys. I think I remember who you're talking about now. <laughs> and it was so, cra- it was so outrageous. See? It was outrageous. Look at her. How'd you do it? How'd you do it? it was, no, we were, I was leaving the comedy store. I just, first of all, I just come from the, I just got past the comedy store, by the way, right away. Um, hello, no one else. <laughs> and it's also I'm... guys, the types of guys we're talking about have guys, or guys who've like made me feel very ugly about myself. Keep yes, going. Yes, no, but it was, I mean, I thought it was a joke. I was like, are you going to be fucking kidding <laughs> Wait, me? Wait, how do you ask? We, we're in, we're like hanging out at the comedy store. First of all, I'm at work, you know, like obviously we're all friends, but I'm like, like if <laughs> if you're a comic and I'm gonna hook up with you, like it stars must have lo- like it has to be a whole thing. Like it can't just be this guy. Like it was like, <laughs> are you fucking kidding Wait, me? You were dri- I remember you. Were I was driving. Yeah. Yes, I was driving to whatever street I was sleeping on at the time. <laughs> My little rent rack that I fucking lived in. I rented like a Plymouth neon that was all dented, and I would just park <laughs> it near my friends' houses and sleep because I kind of knew the neighborhood. But um. I don't know where I was staying at that point, but I was driving to it. <laughs> and said comedian, who, by the way, he pulls up in his Prius. <laughs> Is this Bobby? No. <laughs> oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> so insane, by the way. <laughs> if you think I wouldn't have told you that day, yeah. <laughs> second I spoke to you on FaceTime when I first became friends with you. Um, there's no secret time. Also, <laughs> that's enough on the details. But, but also, <laughs> by the way, Bobby would have been. We don't need Prius. Bobby would have made sense. <laughs> Bobby would have made more sense. This was like, what do you have to offer? Keep going. <laughs> and um, he, we stopped at a light, and I thought there was like a joke, you know. He rolls his window down. I go like, oh hey, like we were just hanging out, and he goes, do you want to come to my house and make out? And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> like ew are you kidding like it was so surprising to me that that person would think but Todd said this to me he goes he goes Annie I want you to know every open micer secretly thinks they can fuck you I'm like that is so annoying because my whole thing since I was young was like I hate that when people think they can I don't like people being entitled to be able to fuck me right. or thinking that I would just fuck them or I'm easy or I'm just like this object for them and so when I see the caliber I always thought it was a higher caliber. Now I go, oh, it's just all of them. <laughs> it's just every single one of them thinks I'll bang them. You know, I actually once had a moment like this that I'm now remembering that there was a male comedian that I like hung out with a couple times. Like we went out for, you know, dinner, or whatever. Just like, usually it's so normal. Super normal. Like we're peers, right? And this was when I was living in a studio apartment with, an, with another person. <laughs> and I he like was asking me about it. And I, like, cause I think he was in town visiting and so he was staying at a friend's and I was like, oh yeah, like I, I share one room with another person. Oh, uh, what a treat as a, as a young female comic to have not a place for them to try to bang you in. <laughs> what a good excuse. But so then he, I had no idea that's where this was leading. But so then like, after I had explained that to him, he was like, oh, I guess we'll never be able to make out then. And I just. It's just like, that's what you thought was happening here? I was so grossed out. I, and that was probably the only time in my life I've ghosted someone. I, we never, he's our peer. I've never. He's our peer? It's never been Who addressed. I'll tell you after the camera. But this kind of just brought up a really fucking terrible memory oh, for no. me. Oh, no. Annie, no. <laughs> <We're> laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I once dated somebody. Oh, no. I'm who, feeling extra giggly. When we broke up. Um, and he still had keys to my place. Um, was took 
revenge on me when he found out that I had been with somebody else like after our breakup by Does bringing a girl NP? bringing a girl to my place to fuck her and you know what his excuse was he's like well she lives on a boat so there was nowhere to fuck her and I was like what about your place <laughs> these themes today I'm capable point. of murder for that okay I, and for a while disgusting to have someone in your ill is that yeah. is that like criminal Yes, you broke into your place to have sex. And I remember disgusting. writing the girl and being really nice about it and being like, hey, girly, next time don't use my place as a fuck pad. Like being really polite too, but obviously with some bite into it. But I'm like not blaming you for his behavior, but also like sh she knew who I was too. Like, is there some type of girl code where she would have been like, wait, this is your ex's home and I know who your ex is. Like some people I are very hurting. Shocked. They're very broken inside and they're not aware of that. When I got hit on, did I talk about this on here recently? When I got hit on by the, by a guy in Ho a Hollywood guy whose wife is like such an icon, like such a like, I, I couldn't be a bigger fan. It's like so offensive. I'm like, why would you think I would ever, ever, ever have anything to do with you? Yeah. Like I would be using you to get to your wife anyway. Um, <laughs> God, wait, my heart is still about? breaking. Oh, getting hit telling up that story. Well, wait, let's go back to talking shit on comics hitting on us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, but Kalila, I'm sorry. That is really traumatic. That's really evil. Someone did something really evil to you. I'm sorry. You're right. I. Why am I like? <laughs> She's not okay. <laughs> I'm really not okay. Like I'm like. How long ago was it? Long enough that I should be over it, but like I, it still like hurts me, and I'm like this, and I'm like, well, it's, and I continue to be friends with just everybody. Like it's okay, every, everything is forgiven, but I'm like, oh, I'm a spineless fucking person. Well, no, no you're coping, that's fine. and you're you're no. just you're coping. And if it's in like a friend group and stuff, and you're just trying to kind of like get through it, and also okay. sometimes forgiveness is for us, not for the other person. Every time, it thank is. you. <laughs> Oops, yeah. Thank you. I feel validated. I think I was very enraged in that moment and maybe just tried to black it out of but my also, memory. But also, here's the out. thing though. It's not just like, who cares about like the sex and stuff is like a completely separate thing. It's like someone like came into your space. That's mm -hmm. so scary. It's to have very someone violating. violate your place. And it and hurt then, me because it was somebody that I like loved once upon a time. And like even going back to my place, I was like, where did they fuck? But did they fuck about, on my couch? Yeah, and then you on have my no bed. Clue, yeah. Think about the origin of those actions, though. It was like out of he was in pain. He did it from a place of pain, and like, so at least that's something. something. That's a win. <laughs> no, I think I understood it at that time. Yeah. I was like, oh, this person like must have felt really like hurt by the thing that I did, which was like move on a little too soon, you know. And so that happened, but. Yeah, and you gotta sit, every time you sit down, you're like, "Is that wet? Is that oh, sticky?" <laughs> yeah, that's violating as fuck. It's so nasty. That's yeah, but it's like even like, how do you feel if someone house sits for you? Like, there's certain people I would never let. Like, I probably wouldn't let anyone really in my house. But there's a comic in New York who I really like. He's funny, but he was like, "Can I stay at your house?" And I was like, "No." Like, I would rather literally pay for you to get a hotel than you come to my house. <laughs> I have boundaries now. I love my home. It's my family's house. Like, you're not going near, I don't want you near my plants and shit. Wait, that's a really good move that I've done. Where it's like, I don't want them in my space, but they're coming into town. I will get a hotel room. But you know what? I also I won't, won't in do my that house. because I was thinking about that. And then I was like, you know what? If you're not, if you don't have enough money to figure out where you can stay then you shouldn't be coming out here yet. You should save mm. up when you can fucking afford your place. Because it's like, why? I'm like, the you know, I can obviously help people when it's the appropriate thing. But anyway, then then he goes, I go, I'm actually out of town that weekend because I was. And he goes, oh, then let me stay at your place. I'm like, the fucking, what would have to happen in the world for me to let you jizz up my beautiful <laughs> apartment? Wait, my gorgeous. No. Really? I would let him stay. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I have had guy friends come over to my old apartment. And smell your undies? No, they would take pictures of my dirty underwear. Ew. I know. I'm like, that's they're trying to embarrass me. I'm not going to They're not it. trying to embarrass you. Yeah, they are. They're trying no. to embarrass themselves. <laughs> they're trying to masturbate to your dirty underwear later. I don't... You think? I think you have the opposite thing because you were like... Uh, yeah. Like we have. We do have opposite instincts there. Yeah, I think everyone has always been trying to fuck you and you just haven't noticed. Noticed. Uh-huh. Whereas with Annie and I, it was noticeable because they were usually 
molest the yeah they <laughs> or well, the interesting the thing rapage that, that you said <laughs> is how you had older brothers whose friends tried to, to fuck you and that's i think that's like why you don't like older guys and whereas i had an older sister who always had hot boyfriends who wanted nothing and that's to why you like me. older women <laughs> do you Wild. like older women Esther? no well yeah a couple years how many years? Well, three exactly. No, three. To be that's exact. not what I was saying. But you mean you like older I, guys because of no, like my exposure to like the older teen boys was that they didn't like me, and yours. And they weren't gonna they hit did. on you because they were dating your yeah. sister. Yeah. I just had a thought that's blowing my fucking mind, Esther. You're gonna be forty. What? And I can't imagine you looking like this and still be and 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 be forty. I'm. I look like a real a twelve year old who's really tired. That's how I'll look the same just tired her this is insane yeah, Annie. and your mom looks so young yeah she yeah but annie you guys the same too, thing yeah. no i think we no, look I great like, not even believe my I, it's so weird i'm so excited to turn 40 but i like it's so weird i'm here it's like so wild you don't age yeah and you look incredible you. it's weird but if i had kids i might have aged sooner i think me they too, take they suck sure. the, the um but um they do the juice wait did we agree that we were all gonna do um microneedling together because yeah. i got but a, why, what a place. is it it's you're just it's small punctures in the skin plus laser we're on not top of it annie right? can't perform mine on me <laughs> i'm gonna use my micro dip <laughs> No, but I, I found us a place. I'm going to put my period okay. blood all over your face. That I'll do. Would you be into that? Why not? Esther's like things she'll try are so weird. <laughs> they just always inv involve someone else's vaginal. Else vagina. <laughs> well, microneedling and what, what questions do we have for the audience in the comments this week? Are you, do you assume people of the opposite sex are into you or not into you? Also, guys are not into me sometimes, too. I'm not saying every guy's into me, but... No, of course not. But you've had very... Like, by saying that like, you have options your whole life means that men have made it known to you. Mm -hmm. Have, like, communicated it. Yeah. Nothing's happening again. Yeah. Wait, okay, I know. <laughs> who would you guys or who did you write a, like, love letter to? Mm -hmm. What celebrity did you write a love letter to? Um, we love you, Suggs. We'll see you next week with a brand new episode. Bye, guys. Bye.